We're here to answer your game, gaming, and game night questions. Today's question is pretty typical year-end question for every gaming podcast out there. And we wouldn't want to be the odd ones out by not talking about our best of 2020. That's right. We're taking the easy way out tonight, like many other shows this time of year. So tonight, we are highlighting the best games each of us have discovered in 2020. Note we said discovered, an important distinction. Yes, because before we get to the games, I don't know. I, I want to mention first off that, it, that I think we need to note that this was not your typical year. For anyone who may be listening to this, I don't know, in the future because they decided to listen to our whole backlog or something. 2020 was not a normal year in any way, shape, or form. Uh, this has probably been the most unique year in many of our lives. Definitely our mine. Um, in many ways, and there's a lot of terrible stuff going on. So I thought taking a break from thinking about that and focusing on some of the good that came out of it. Some of the fun we had playing games with others. While there were no game physical game conventions this year, and our actual number of physical game plays are way down, they were actually higher than I expected. The other thing that I've noticed with 2020 is it's way longer than one year, as far as I can tell, because I, when putting this list together, I was surprised that I have played over 150 different games this year. I would have never guessed it was that high. But then I kept seeing stuff. And I'm like, wait a minute, Medium? No, I played that like two years ago. No, that was February. Or Clans of Caledonia. We've been playing so many games on Board Game Arena. I just assumed I've been playing that forever. So that kind of threw me off. So we did play a surprising number of games, whether with friends, family, online, or in our bubbles. Indeed. While it's been a feature for us since well before 2020, many people yeah. discovered more online gaming than ever before, and sites like our favorite, Board Game Arena. Yeah. Board Game Arena, you can send our payment, too. <laughs> <laughs> Anymore, it's getting to that point. I, uh... give, us a, give us a free uh, subscription. I'd be happy with that. That'd, that'd be perfectly cool. Yep. Now, what I would have liked to have done, and this is what almost every other podcast is doing, I don't know where they're getting to play all their games, is a best of 2020 list. But not being able to hit the con scene in particular uh, really hurt this because the main way I get to try the new hotness is to demo them at the conventions. And then if they're interested enough, do full game plays and then possibly bring the games home for more plays. So while I did get to try some new games in 2020, thanks to the publishers who were able to supply us review copies of those, most of what I played this year did come out prior to 2020. So this list of games are games that are new to us in 2020. Um, not even necessarily new to both of us. One might be new to one of us and not the other. And not necessarily published in 2020. Though some do were published in 2020. And as usual, we're in no particular order here whatsoever, though I think mine actually came down to the number of times I played them because I went through my board game geek list and that's how it sorts everything is by your number of plays. So I can't guarantee it, but this might be in order of the number of times I played the game in 2020, but might not. So number one, we're going to, oh, another thing too, is we're going to go through these a little quicker than our game recommendation episodes where we try to sell you on the game. This is more just to give you a little quick overview and why we like the games as opposed to a full you know, short mini review. So number one for me, or the first one for me, is Codenames Duet. This became a favorite date night game for Deanna and I. We play this almost any time we decide to have some charcuterie and beer. It's a two-player game, but note, it's not only two-player. This is part that people forget about Codenames Duet. It's actually a team game, and we actually had a lot of fun playing with the extended family, playing six players, three per side. Next, I've got the Fox in the Forest series. I'm putting these both together for a change. This is the Fox in the Forest, Fox in the Forest duet, one competitive, one co-op, both two-player trick-taking games. We mentioned this so many times in the show, I don't think I need to go on about it anymore. Um, this is kind of like the Azul of 2020 versus where last year we talked way too much about Azul. This is our most recommended game this year. Pretty much every time we do a game list, this ends up on it. Well, and next is Medium. I doubt there are too many people who haven't at least heard of this one this year. But at the beginning of the year, I actually got to play this one in person mm -hmm. with real people. And what seemed like a silly idea turned out to be great fun as laughter filled the room quickly. Mm -hmm. While it's not going to be work as well with just any old players, when the right shared experiences meet in the middle, you get an experience which is anything but merely medium. Next, I've got Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. I am still shocked that they published a huge mass market big box game like 
at like a version of Gloomhaven at Target. This was a Target exclusive. I did not expect this to work. I thought this was going to flop. And it did not. It got so many new people into hobby gaming. That's fantastic. And the reason for that is this is a fantastic entry point for Gloomhaven. It's got great onboarding, something that was completely missing from the original. If you are considering picking up Gloomhaven, Frosthaven, or any of the games, start with Jaws of the Lion. There's no reason not to. And I see a lot of talk about this one as the sort of people's game of the year. Yeah. Next, I have one that we just talked about last week, which is not Dice. My only regret about this game is I should have backed the Kickstarter when I first saw it. Like, it looked neat, and I was eh, wishy-washy. I'm like, I wish I would have been part of funding this. These are really cool dice with fun games. And what I'm expecting from this one is when things return to normal, this is going to become a new date night game for Deanna and I. When we go out, when we go to uh, Kingsville to go to Jack's Gastro Pub, or we're sitting at a, at a, at a, a, a brew pub playing at a pub or a cafe where you don't have much table space because once you learn the games all you really need is the dice well next up is azul summer pavilion the third of the azul games and a very solid offering while i still think it isn't quite as perfect as the original it sits in the list above sintra in the series mm -hmm. as a real go-to game it's need for more space than the original is the one thing that really kind of knocks it out of, out of the running for best of azul games now, for me, I actually prefer it to Azul nowadays. If I'm going to sit down and play Azul, I'm going to grab Summer Pavilion. Unless, again, I'm going to go to a coffee shop, but that's not well, happening this again, year. Again, size is part of it, right? It, yeah. it just has that much bigger footprint. But for getting together with my local group in my basement, I'm going to grab Summer Pavilion. Yep. Next up, Quad Heroes from Ryan Eiler. Uh, it's too bad Tech's not in the chat. He'd be clapping right now. Uh, this My kids love this game. Like I like it. It's a solid game. It's a, it's sort of it's it's sort of program movement where you have a cube shaped character and you tumble the character and what sides facing up is how they move. Amazing production values, like up there, top notch, almost as good as like Mechs versus Minions. Uh, a bit of a pain to start though. Like there's a lot of tiles and a lot of pieces, but once you get it set up, it's a ton of fun playing. Now, here's uh, possible somewhat insider info. There is a new edition of Quad Heroes that will be launching on Kickstarter next year. Up next, I have Clans of Caldonia. This is the one that just does not feel like I've been playing it for less than a year. Like, like it feels uh, two, three years at least of experience playing Clans of Caldonia. I would have believed the first, you know, new new on digital, but I would have I thought you had played this previously yeah. in physical. But I know I bought it on Boxing Day. Huh? Like, I, I remember I bought it at the, the CG Realm Boxing Day sale, and I didn't get it played until January, February. So it makes sense when I think about it when I got it and everything else. But yeah, this is a great Scottish-themed engine building and economic game. Tons of asymmetry with the different clans, and not just a re-theme of Terra Mystica. Yeah, no, absolutely not. And, uh, and we play it all the time. <laughs> Next up is Gorus Maximus. Trick-taking and gladi gladiatorial gore. This game soars at higher player counts, mm -hmm. and if you don't mind the cartoony yet graphic depictions of violence on the card, you're in for a great and unique trick-taking game as Trump changes while you're playing a hand. Yeah, mid-hand. And there is a re-theme without it, but we're not going to dive into that tonight. Next, I have the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game Core Set. Now, it's important. It's called Core Set, not Base Set. This just came out in 2019. This is a newly revised and updated version of the popular Pathfinder Adventure Card Game. Very engaging hand management deck construction game that Deanna and I have really enjoyed playing through as a two-player experience. Um, everything we can see about this has been improved with the new edition. Every little change they've done, the tweaks to the art, the refining of the different keywords all looks awesome. My only complaint is a lousy box insert. <laughs> Next, some real new hotness. This is just showing up at Kickstarter backers' homes right now as we speak this week is Chronicles of Crime 1400. This was my first experience with the Chronicles of Crime system, which has been out for a couple of years and people have really kind of gone nuts for, but I hadn't tried it myself. I was impressed. I, I Way more fun doing this than I thought I would. And the use of the app in this is so brilliant to create a very immersive experience. It sold me on playing mystery games. And plus, I love the 1400 medieval setting. I just think that's way cooler than just being a British geek cop. <laughs> well, next up is The Crew. 
This is one we had been told we needed to play. And he got added as an honorable mention as a result to our trick-taking episode. Mm -hmm. So when we found out it was on B uh, Board Game Arena, we jumped on it, and we don't regret it at all. Oh. We've had a few games now, and while it really needs real-time play, mm -hmm. don't try playing turn-based. It is a brilliant implementation of trick-taking in a co-op setting. Yeah, I've really enjoyed that. Looking forward. I do have the physical copy now. Thanks, Tech. Uh, one of our one of our fans sent us that copy. Looking forward to playing the physical copy once we can play with more people. Unfortunately, I hear it's not great two player, but we will test that out sometime soon. Next up, I have an expansion. I wasn't sure if I wanted to put expansions on here, but you know what? It's an expansion for Orleans. It's an older expansion. It might be the oldest thing on this list. I'm not positive on that, though. I love Orleans. I, I consider it one of the best games in my collection. Like probably top five up there with uh, with Shogun and Power Grid. And this expansion took the original and only made it better, mostly. While we weren't fans of the intrigue part and the backstabbing, every other aspect, the other three modules of this expansion I thought were amazing and just improved on the original, and I don't plan on playing without them ever again. Absolutely. Orlean is, is, is great, and, and I agree. Intrigue is just meh, not yeah. our style. <laughs> I mean, maybe there's people out there. Like, I talk to the group who are all about cutthroat backstabbing, even they don't like it. So, yeah. I don't know. I think they just went a little too far on that one. A little too much take that in what's a generally a Euro game. Yep. Next, I've got Harry Potter House Cup Competition. Uh, this is one we still haven't even reviewed on the blog, but we have been playing it. This was the biggest surprise for me this year. I don't know what I expected, but I wasn't expecting an extremely solid entry-level worker placement game. Like, to me, this replaces Wards of Waterdeep as the game you show off how, how, what worker placement is. It's just that step down in complexity because you're not building buildings and there's no intrigue cards. But you're still collecting stuff to complete missions. While the iconography could use a bit of work, the gameplay more than makes up for it. Uh, next up for me is Rallyman GT. This was an unexpected one that I got invited to on Board Game Arena. But after going in without knowing it as a first play disaster, I watched the <laughs> rule vid, figured out the concept I've been missing, and since then it has been a huge favorite online. And I almost backed a new uh, version of off-road version on Kickstarter until I realized I really didn't have the group to play it with. Yeah. Um, it's not a great two-player game especially, but again, as you get enough cars on the track, it really soars. Yeah, I got to try the two-player just to see how the mechanics work, and I thought it was really neat. It was much lighter than I thought it was going to be, but not in a bad way. Yep. I am looking forward to be getting into some of those online games in the new year when I've got time to actually play. Yeah, I'm about to crush everybody in, in our, uh, our, our <laughs> latest uh, race, so uh, nice. we should have another one going soon. Next, I have Bastille. Uh, this one's also a surprise in the way that it's it's the biggest hidden gem on the list tonight, in my opinion. This is the one no one else has heard of. Now, I expect it to be good, so it's not like it surprised me, but it was better than I thought. This is a game set in the French Revolution, combines worker placement with bidding in a pretty unique way, using uh, prestige to do things. What really blows me away about this game, though, is the design and iconography. I actually hold this up as a shining example of great graphic design whenever we're talking about design of board games for just easy to see iconography that you can read from across the board and that almost walks you through play with a series of icons. Next, I've got Sanctum from Czech Games Edition. This is Diablo in board game form. This is a unique game. Like it's, it's not what you'd expect when you hear a Diablo game, but then it kind of is. Like there's lots of dice chucking but it's all about collecting the right equipment to mitigate all the randomness of that dice chucking. You're going to kill lots of beasties to get better gear. Everything you kill drops gear. And then once you're equipped up, go take on the demon Lord. Now there are some idiosyncrasies to this game. That means it won't be for everyone, but we've really enjoyed it. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's odd because it's, it's a, it's a Euro, but it's not, I mean, it's a dice chucking Euro in many ways. Yeah, exactly. That's which is, which is just strange. <laughs> It's a, definitely a unique game. It's it's not what I would have done if I designed a Diablo video board game, but it works. Now, next up is Corridor, a seemingly simple, abstract game with a single pawn and some walls, and you just have to get to the other side of the board. And if you think that means it must be easy, you must not play many abstract games. <laughs> this is a brain burner, and it can really bend the brain at four players due to the bi-directional crossings yeah. that are going on. 
Yeah, this is definitely the oldest game on the list. Um, I would have had this on the list too, but I've actually played that growing up with my dad. So I was the one that introduced Sean to it after like, oh my God, you never played Corridor. It's way better than I remembered. And then when I played it, I'm like, oh, it's way better than I remember. Because <laughs> when I was a kid, I wasn't picking up on some of those strategies. Yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot to it. Yeah, this is you can find that everywhere. Uh, Gigamic Games picks it up, and it's well worth it. It's also beautiful, too. It's one of those you leave it out on a desk or on a, on, on a end table or centerpiece. Yep. Next, I've got 878 Vikings. This is one I would have sworn I played in 2019, but it ends up I played it this year. I got to admit, this one, I, I need to play this more. Like, I feel bad. This was the, the first game in the Birth of Europe series, which is a follow-up to the popular Birth of America series that many people have raved about. This is a folk-on-a-map game that really impressed Deanna and I, and I'm still looking forward to playing it with more players. This is one I really want to try out more, but to really shine, I need a bigger group. And unfortunately, heavy war games aren't really something I'm sharing with the kids at this point. Next up, I've got Exit the Haunted Roller Coaster. Now, we did play a handful of Exit games this year. Um, House of Riddles, Catacombs of Horror. I think there was a couple other ones, but Haunted Roller Coaster stood out as the best of the bunch. This particular escape room game had just this great mix of different styles of puzzles, the thematic elements, and just a lot of whimsy to this one. That just it was It was fun and whimsical while playing it that we really enjoyed. And I still, to this time, say... This is the gateway exit game right now. If you are going to try an exit game from Cosmos, pick up hit Haunted Roller Coaster as your first one. Well, next up is Concept. Now, this is hardly a new game, nope. and it's one we've talked about many times on the show. I'd simply never had the opportunity to play it. So this year, as we wrapped up the 24 hours of Extra Life, we discovered a beta version of it on Board mm -hmm. Game Arena and played a handful of games in what turned out to be a great interface for the game yeah. to play. And just this morning, they announced that it is officially released on Board Game Arena as part of the 27 or 25 games of uh, Christmas. It shocked me the most is how well it worked with two players. I've always played Concept with a group of like 5, 10, 20 people. Playing it two players worked surprisingly well, just taking turns giving clues. Next, I have Coimbra. Uh, this is another one that, like 878 Vikings, I feel bad for not getting more plays in. I've had this on my pile of shame way too long. People have been raving about this game. Well, they raved about it until supposedly there's a broken strategy that everyone stopped raving about it. I personally haven't read that. Don't tell me. I don't want to know because we haven't figured it out yet. Um, having not figured it, this out, this blew me away. I'm like, oh, man, I, this is great. Like, this is one of those games that could be up there with the, with the Shogun's and the Power Grids and stuff like that, though I haven't played it enough to know for sure. Like, people love multi-use cards. Well, this is that, but multi-use dice. Like your dice aren't only used to determine your player order and who gets to draft first, but what types of citizens you draft and then which of the four tracks could go up. I need to get this one played more. This is one one that I, I got one play in and we haven't been back to it. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, Coimbra. I got to play that more. Up next, I have Eclipse Second Dawn for the Galaxy. Now this one did take its time getting here. Uh, it was due, I think, over a year before it actually showed up. This new updated version of Eclipse was totally worth the wait. Uh, besides being amazing looking with uh, the UV details on the board and a whole bunch of miniatures and custom dice, the gameplay is just as good as ever. I've always been a big fan of Eclipse. I actually prefer Eclipse to Twilight Imperium. Um, I loved it. And the minor tweaks they did made the game tighter and a little more competitive without as many runaway leader problems. No more finding a dreadnought out in space and just trouncing anyone. Sorry, Sean Hamilton. Not Sean from Hamilton. Well, next up is Emotep, another not new for the show, but new to me. Mm -hmm. Now, playing this one just reinforced every good thing we have said about it on the show. It yeah. really is a game that belongs in pretty much everyone's collections just due to the sheer variety of play you can get mm -hmm. out of it. Yeah, I'm still a huge fan of Emotep. If, if we were still doing public events, I'm sure I would have had way more plays of that this year. Yeah. Next up, I have Nyctophobia. I felt I had to include this one just because of how different it is, how unique it is. There's nothing else out there like Nyctophobia, and it was a joy to play and discover this game. This is a game where all but one player is playing literally blinded through blindfold glasses or blackout glasses. Maybe not the best game ever made, but this was a really cool experience that I think needs to be highlighted. 
next i have scooby-doo escape from the haunted mansion i for me this might be my game of the year this this is in my opinion the best game in the list with my family this was the game my family had the most fun playing together ever with the four of us deanna and myself and my two girls we've never had a better time with the four of us at a table laughing and working together and the kids just like like laughing so hard they started feeling ill in a good way right <laughs> like it was great now the problem why i don't know if i'd want to actually put it on that best game pedestal is the fact it's a one and done you can only ever have that experience once and my kids are constantly now begging me to play another mystery style game and i don't have one to present to them so i don't know that that one and done hurts it but man is that a great experience especially with kids who get into it excellent now I'm going to finish off the list with the only RPG on the list, sadly. Um, the reason I saved this for last two is because both of us played this, Sean and I. This was both our only RPG of the year. I was the only one we played in 2020. And I got to say, that's just weird. Like it's Sean and I only played one game and we played it together. Like that probably hasn't happened since the 1990s. <laughs> so that's kind of strange. Um, it's been a long time since that happened. Now, I'm not just highlighting it because it's the only one we played like please don't get that idea that it's it's the best it's the best game we played all year because it's the only game we played no we actually had a lot of fun i had a lot of fun running this for sean and some of our patreon patrons super rules light high improv but really unique and tons of fun and did give that dungeon crawly feel no absolutely uh again it's my only only played rpg of the year although i have been collecting a bunch in hopes mm -hmm. of playing other th things uh at some point in the future so didn't you have an online game of something going? A play by forum? Uh there's or was some... that was that twenty nineteen? That was at the end of twenty nineteen. Oh course. okay. Yeah. That was masks. Yeah. All right. We do have three honorable mentions that we're gonna bring up tonight as well that don't quite get to our best new discoveries of twenty twenty. For me, the first one is the Alien RPG starter set. This RPG box set from Freely Publishing just blew me away in almost every way it could. Like, first, just how much is in there? Like, it's just it's packed full. And it's a great value because a lot of the stuff that's in that box, you can buy separately. And if you add up the price separate compared to what you pay in the box, it's just a great deal. Then the quality was up there. Like, it's all top-notch. But most of all, the rules. Like, there are some great changes to the Year Zero engine that really do a good job of capturing that tension and feel that you want from an alien experience. The only reason it's not on the main list, though, is I haven't actually played it. I've just read through everything in the box. Well, next up on our honorable mentions is Gorinto, because, well, it's not actually out yet. Yeah. This game was a Kickstarter preview that we were sent, but it really caught our attention. And while still in a rough form physically when we had it, mm -hmm. everyone who got to try it thoroughly enjoyed it. The Kickstarter was successful, uh, successfully funded, and the final design for the game looks amazing. We look forward to seeing great things from this game when it finally gets onto people's tables. Yeah, I think some people are starting to get copies. It's out there. It's, it's getting out to people, but there are obviously some uh, shipping delays in the world right now. I am really looking forward to playing this in like physical with the plastic tiles and everything. Yeah, Gorinto yeah. blew me away. That was one of the like I'm like I, I get pre Kickstarter previews fairly often and they're usually enjoyable that was like wow like this is good this is this is a fantastic game and i got a huge props to mark specter from grand gamers guild for the interaction we had that whole time like i mentioned when i first played it we were sitting at a coffee shop and i had rules questions and he got back to me right away it was amazing so great experience there overall now my last game on the list is another kickstarter preview and that was for macaron this is a trick-taking game that really impressed Deanna, and even more so her mom. Dee's mom actually asked us to leave our preview copy at her house so <laughs> she could play it more often. Uh, this is a trick-taking game with a twist. It did fun, but I'm sad to say barely. So I hope Sunrise Tornado set their target at a good spot, that it's still going to be good. Um, it's not their first game, so I expect it will get delivered. But I am looking forward to seeing this one hit the market. And I'm really hoping for their sake, because it's really good, that it takes off once more people get experience with the game and people start playing it. All right, well, that's it for this, uh, for our 2020's best games list. We're going to head over to Lobby now and see what the folk in the Lobby discovered this year. So let's have a chat room. What were the best games you played this year? Uh, we've got one from Danielle in our chat room. It was a 100-word RPG 
uh, off of, out of a zine that she was introduced to in 2019, but didn't actually play until 2020, called okay. Sword Loser. Sword Loser. So J- from Jackson Tegu, uh, I think that's how you pronounce the name. Uh, the Sword Loser is a story of a lovable rake named Tynegald, who has a bad habit of losing swords. With a group okay. of friends, you create the stories behind his re- recent acquisitions and losses. See, when it said sword loser, I thought like the person was a loser, not they lost. <laughs> nope, things. they lose. They find and lose swords, and you tell the story of it. Oh, Very and Jen cool. Adcock ran it, so it, it must have been that would have oh, been. Well, that, uh, that's that an added fun. bonus. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we had a surprisingly quiet chat room. No one played any games this year. I was expecting like a list. Well, unfortunately, I mean, other than Danielle, everyone else has played all their games with you. So, <laughs> well, there is that. Uh, I'd love to hear what Deanna's favorite games of the year she played were because I'm sure they're different than mine. Well, more than likely, yes. Uh, there's definitely a, a weight differential in, in preferences. Uh, yes. Uh, Quad Heroes probably wouldn't have come in on her list. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure Quad <laughs> Heroes is not on that list whatsoever. Uh, Hidden Worlds Incur- Incursion. Yep. We learned about it. Yeah. Well, that, that's all. You know, you'll. You learn about stuff, and but if you if you haven't gotten to the table, I knew about Imhotep a long time before I actually got it to the table in 2020. Yeah, so Deanna Deanna's backing me up on yep, Scooby Doo, the, the Scooby Doo with the kids. Like, oh, just see my my kids play that, and their reactions when they when they're like, "What? We're gonna have Shaggy eat the butler? What? Are we gonna have Shaggy eat the butler?" Yeah, and they I, actually it's... expected like the yeah. the Shaggy to eat the butler. It's <laughs> it's a shame that The Shining has had issues. Because yeah. that could hurt the next, and, and I know they've, I know there is a next. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen them talking about uh, wrapping it up. I know there is another Coded Chronicles system. Yeah. Um, and and it's a shame that 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 sort of possibly tarnished the system's reputation a bit. Very true. Uh, what I haven't done, except for the feedback we got on our own review, is look to see what other people are saying. So I yeah, I, I haven't, haven't seen either haven't way seen review, to be honest. I haven't looked at the reviews. No. Yeah, Deanna's saying one of the best games of the year. And it did something unique and the girls loved it so much. I agree. Like, like yeah. oh, absolutely. I just hate to put something one and done as a game of the year. If I if I had to announce the best game, which there's the part we didn't do, is is what is what is the best game out of all these? Which uh, actually I'm gonna have to scroll back up. So Shining but, is not uh not not rated. It's only twelve ratings total and only one comment oof. on wow, BGG. That's, so no one's so even buying I don't, it. I don't think anyone's got it. <laughs> Okay, um, maybe it's not as mass market yet. There's only tw- only 29 people even have it as fan or, or listed as fans on the game. So, yeah, uh, trade um, and intrigue for Leon's way up there, but I hate, again, I can't make that a 2020 game of the year, right? Or even close. I, I'm gonna have to say Jaws of the Lion is, is up there, or Clans of Caledonia. Now, if I had to pick out of the games I played from 2020, I'm gonna have to say Jaws of the Lion probably. Oh, uh, v- uh, Venus was uh, it was new for me. That's uh. That's true. You guys thought they they, they yes. really liked their the the plays of Venos. Yeah, I I had played Venos in twenty nineteen, yeah, so that's not on my list. Uh, Clans of Caledonia, Deanna saying consistently enjoying Clans of Caledonia. Yep. Um, May liked Nyctophobia and Venos Deluxe Edition. Venos Deluxe Edition is really good. It's just I played that one in twenty nineteen, but I think that's a fantastic yep. game. That I I don't know. I understand it, right? So why? Vital Asserta's games, like maybe it's my fault. I haven't played his other ones, but no one talks about Vinos. All you ever hear about is um, Tricurion and Lisboa and uh, the new one on Mars. I'm like, are they that much better than Vinos? Because Vinos is really good. I'll admit, CO2 Second Chance did not live up to my expectations from Vital. I, I mean, it was disappointing. The deluxe edition comes in at an 8.2 on BGG. Yeah, so it's, people like there. it. I mean, there's that's I, a high... maybe it's just. No one's talking about it, and that's that's with with four thousand ratings. It's got an eight point two. I mean, so how's that compared to Lisboa? Because that's uh, the one everyone says is his best. Liz, uh, if I can spell, that would actually help. L i s b o a. No, I know I know how to spell. I just can't type. It. All right, um, eight point two. <laughs> so six thousand ratings, also an eight point two. Yeah, more ratings. So yeah, like I said, people say Lisboa. We we sat down to play Lisboa. Uh, with Neil and Big J, and Big J ended up canceling. Like, we were actually sitting there, like, the game set up on the table, and we got a text, and it's one of those, like, only plays well with certain player counts or whatever, right. and we end up playing something else with Neil instead, and I don't remember what. 
I think we introduced Neil to Gentis. I think it might have been. Right. Now, Engine yeah, Games is pointing out CO2 is probably one of the games I hated most yeah. of this year. And I have to say, uh, you know, she calls it a misery game. And it's, it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, he, it's a he deliberately, deliberately said that. Uh, and there's, you know, you're not supposed to play that version of the game if you want to have a, a fun game. Yeah. No, so. it's true. I, we need to play CO2 with the, the, the easy hack. Yeah, yeah. And see if it's at all enjoyable. Because that's Cause it supposed was not, to be how the like, game is. Like that's yeah, that's I the like game it. game versus the what you published. Yeah, we're yes. all gonna we're all gonna die game. <laughs> no, it's it's true. Uh, CO two we did, I I dropped it because it was it was that miserable. Like we played yep. twice. We played co op, then we played competitive, and so far based on reviews, no one has ever won playing competitive. Which again is a statement. It's if yep, you yep, don't no, work absolutely. together to defeat carbon and climate change you're gonna fail i i yeah i get the uh i get the point but i don't need my board game to prove that to me repetitively interestingly i went at 7.7 yeah i wonder how much I, of that's I mean, based yeah, on I, it's the, the original the game, or i don't know <laughs> is co2 second chance a separate entry yeah it is okay and so? it's i mean it's it's overwhelmingly rated at eight by people huh. um yeah i found that rough but again maybe with that hack yeah, maybe. maybe. I, I hope that's all. That's how they're rating it, because otherwise it's just a, a game. Or it's, like I said, people who played the non-deluxe who are rating the deluxe. Because I liked the original. That's why I backed the original, and I kind of wish I kept my old copy, but I sold it before the other one showed up to recoup the cost, which is what right. I often do with stuff with new editions. As soon as I hear about the new edition, I decide to buy it. I try to sell my copy for a pretty good price, and then only in paying the upgrade cost, right. which yeah, yeah. has worked pretty well. So yeah, Deanna is basically saying Jaws of Lions Slick did a great job of streamlining it. For Fox of the Forest was one of the favorites. Um, not Duet. Duet's good, but the competitive she liked better, which isn't surprising. Not surprising. <laughs> <laughs> not surprising at all. Um, uh, Danielle's basically so hard to get anything to the table when we're trying yeah. to isolate from friends, and the two of us are just worn out from work. Yeah. No, we definitely had that problem. Like I and like I've been playing stuff online, but not a lot. I still prefer to play in person. And yeah. there's only so many games you can play two player. And plus, we've been working too. Uh, it's, we we worked more hours once everything hit than we did before. Yeah, no, <laughs> so, absolutely. So not not every night do we want to sit downstairs and play games. Yep, it has been a rough one. Yep. All right. I think we're good. Uh, not the busiest chat room tonight, but thank you very much for those of you who did take part. Finally, as always, if you have a game or game night question for me, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop. 